go give this a cast because I haven't seen a good French. Well, I have, but not on the ladder. I haven't seen a good France um, build order in a while. The only the only build order I tend to do with France is is kind of industrial into the revolt. That's just because they have the coolest revolt in the game. So, you know, but yeah, let's kick this one off. Let's put that on. Looks like we might have some temporary... Okay, looked like we had about a 10-15 second delay there. But that's not going to matter too much because the villagers were gathering resources starting crates anyway. So that's not too bad. So we've got this guy called Bullet Chen. No one... I don't know if anyone actually knows who it is. It's clearly a smurf on the ladder. They're almost 2k. I think they're about 1980 elo. So almost 2k elo. So obviously a very, very good player. Going up against Frontline, who everyone knows Frontline. He's currently in the EPL tournament at the moment, and he's doing really well. You know, sort of that Yukati level, I would say, the Iron Turk Yukati level. So, again, very strong player. Probably sits around the top 30 most of the time. I think I might have seen him in the top 15, top 10. So, Frontline, a very strong player. He's playing as India as well. Very solid sieve. So, we'll see what we're going to get this game. I reckon we'll get a very solid build order from France, which I'm going to be keeping a close eye on but as frontline interesting to see what we're going to see from frontline because this map i don't feel like is particularly good for india main reason being is where on earth are they going to put the agrifort like <laughs> where are you there is no room to put an agrifort on this map you like you definitely can't squeeze one in here maybe one here maybe not but it's just going to be off center which is never what you want to do as with an agrifort you always want it in the center of the map to take that map control so maybe we won't see an agrifort maybe we'll see the the more boomy carney carney martyr with india here playing very standard going for that distributivism first card getting 90 wood peasant weaponry okay interesting that's a lot of wood for a peasant weapon but uh yeah that's going to be very good it's very good for india as well because obviously they build villages with wood so front line is going to be chuffed to bits with that on the other side of the map 100 xp would still rather take 90 would still rather take 90 wood definitely not wood's obviously the most valuable resource because it's the hardest to get or it's the slowest to get so wood's always always going to be the best but 100 xp you can't go wrong with 100 xp you know He's got the TP as well, so he's going to be stacking those cards. Going to be fun with that 90 coin. Oh, but maybe so is the French guy. Going for the wolf. So there we go. We are going to see the Carly Martyr. Might have been in the back of his mind to want to do anyway, but having this map does definitely limit the option of going for the aggro. I mean, you could do an in-base aggro, but that's you, you tend not to want to do that. So, very nice pickup for India. I've always said I think India explorers are so lame because they're so good. Because they're essentially two cav units. Two cav units that can each stun a treasure guardian. So, kind of insane. Much more efficient than an ex uh, a European explorer. So, that's going to be a really nice pickup. So, definitely frontline winning the treasure war. Going for some market techs now. Let's take a quick look over to Bullet Chen. Lots of people on wood. He's got a certain amount of food. Maybe he's got a build order in plan. Wow, so one herd, two herd, three herd. Okay, that's not quite a good herd, but that was an interesting shooting backwards. Wow, so these herds as well, actually, not that great. This map's kind of known for being a bit iffy with the herds. They could, they could literally, they have a mind of their own. They could tend to walk away, and if they do that on this map... Yeah, you're going to have a hard time herding it in. Definitely going to need to get those sheep dogs, those shepherds. But let's see what he decides to spend his resources on. Market going up, but quite late. He could have been building that 30 seconds at least faster. Oh, hello. 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 We're not getting any normal build orders. The House of Oldenburg. Looks like he's going to be getting for another TP as well. So we could see an early stage coats. Hunting dogs does come in. He's chopped a lot of wood. Aged up with the quartermaster. Four vils is the first card. He was spamming that card, okay? You know it. 
Okay. Has he used... Wow, so he's actually used economic theory. Do my eyes deceive me? I did think, right, he had a starting TP. He has actually used economic theory. I am shocked to my core. Let's just take a quick look. When he gets another card, I'll be 100% sure, but this is... This is perhaps the greediest play I've ever seen. Now, one thing to mention about Oldenburg. One thing to mention about Oldenburg is that they can produce these guys, Royal Huntsmen, which basically can act as a villager on natural resources. Certainly on food. So we see he is building them. Yeah, so it's only animals so that he can hunt from. So yeah, he's going full greed. Stagecoach is coming in as well. Frontline is going to see this. He's going to see both sides and the House of Tegelian coming in now. So, yeah, I mean, he's getting the wolf on this line of sides also. Maybe he wants this Oldenburg as well. Maybe he wants to get that double population of Royal Huntsmen. Frontline is going to seal this. Consulate going up now. Barracks is down, but I don't see any units out just yet. So, Frontline going for greed of his own. Obviously going for the Carney Martyr, which is going to buff all in this radius. All of these uh, these villagers, you can see the green ring around them, which shows you that they're in the radius of the Carni Mata. Wow, look at this. Stacking up Royal Huntsman. Getting the big button soon, which is going to be the hot air balloon. And that's going to be really... Like, look how quickly that comes in. Now, that only takes a couple of minutes. And that's going to be really, really efficient for him to gain some line of sights and gain some information on what the opponent is going to do. We have some Rajputs. No... Okay, this could actually decide to seize the trading post. Oh, we got some Rajputs this side as well. That's about to go down. This is a great response from front line. Completely countering this full greed. There are some Royal Huntsmen out. There's two Royal Huntsmen here. 1.18 on food. That's not far off a CBD. Holy moly. Some lip, tar, lip car out now. And I believe that's going to be... He doesn't even have the native treaty card. The one that gives him um, a certain amount of units from each ally he has. They're going to come out. And they're going to... They're not going to do a lot of damage. But they're going to be enough to deter these Rajputs any further. But the Rajputs did, did, did some good work. They took out two TPs. That's 400 resources. Some nice micro there. Look at these guys. They have an insane animation and fire rate. 1.25. With 16 attack, that's more than I thought it was, actually. And they are kind of like a goon, uh, cavalry archer type unit. But obviously, Rajputs are a melee unit. So the Liptars are going to have the advantage of being able to micro them at range. Some more getting built here. Some more being built now. That's about 15 he's got in total. And that is going to be his max. So he has 10 weight. Feels like he's got more than that. He does. He has 15. I'm not sure how he's got the other five then. He definitely doesn't have the native card that gives him. No. Oh, maybe it's because he had one TP and then uh, he could build a certain amount and then one got taken down. Oh, no. I actually don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's a tech. Maybe it's one of the techs that gives you an extra five. Okay, so now looking good. Some Azaps is the response. And that comes from the consulate, the Ottoman consulate. That's a great response because obviously they have bonuses at cav at range as well. If we look here, light range cavalry, they have four times. These Rajputs are looking for a good snare. But they're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. I love I love these uh, Rajputs. They're currently on the guard formation. Uh, it seems to be quite the, the hot topic at the moment. The hot thing, the new hot trend at the moment is putting particularly cavalry units on the guard mode, uh, the guard stance, and that's that kind of that kind of squashes your units together. And if you see cavalry do it, it makes cavalry in a really tight formation, especially in small numbers. And that's that's going to make them a lot more efficient at raiding, and it's better for their hitboxes. So, anyone who's watching, it's a nice little uh, nice little tip to in to increase your chances of raiding and killing um, killing villagers, particularly. Okay, nice. We've got a little bit of posturing going on, a little bit of micro. Some expos coming out for the French player now. He's also making eight crossbows. Wow, look at this. And he's on 30 villagers. I'm not sure if that takes into consideration the Royal Huntsman. Oui. 
Perhaps it does, because he's on 28, and we saw those two Royal Huntsmen earlier. Some Shock Riders coming in now. These guys are glass cannons, but if they get on a skirmish unit or villagers, they're going to absolutely destroy them. The Rajputs, though, oh, they will absolutely, like, four-shot them. It's got some nice units in the background dealing really decent damage. These Expos, it doesn't look like there's a response. I mean, he's got a few Gurkha, but that's not going to be enough. These Azaps do very little damage to anything other than Cav as well. So the, the Bullet Chen's not really going to be too worried about that. Some Minutemen getting called the Pikemen Minutemen. But they should go down to the Lit Cars. Look at this. He definitely wants to micro the Gurkhas first because they're the ones that are going to be damage. Or perhaps he wants to go for the, the Azaps just so the Cavalry can get in there and smash them, wedge them in. Just units coming out of his backside here. Just Lit Cars, Natives. Crossbowman double producing them. 700 gold now coming in. Not sure what he's going to spend that 700 gold on. Perhaps more natives and more shot riders coming in. That could be the perfect. As long as he takes down the Azaps, he really needs to micro those Azaps. Once they're gone, these guys, these shot riders are going to do some decent damage. But look, he's, he's attacking villagers and that's not what you want. Bullet Chain, you've got 2k elo. You should have better micro than this. They finally go down, but it's just going to be such little HP left in them. Frontline is H3. He does now have Discipline Gurkha. Big boy Julian coming in. But he's not really going to do much. Could have been useful earlier on in the fight. The 700 God has now come in for the French, uh, French player. Is he going to decide to age up with that? Or is he going to decide to make more units? It's always the, the age on question. Score looking very favourable for Frontline. Frontline's obviously gone greed himself with the Wonder Choice. He's now got the training post with Stagecoats. And that's a very safe Stagecoach as well because it's behind his base. So it's always a really safe bet to go for Stagecoach. Double TP on this map. Concert is down. Doesn't look like there's a flag on there. So it was an Ottoman. Oh, sorry, that's the Barracks. I need to get some glasses. I need to get some two spec savers. I was about to say, it's about the sort of time that he wants to start getting the Brit Consulate down. And he does have the Brits down now. That's going to buff all his units. Some really nice raining going on in the back here. But these guys aren't exactly known for their high melee damage output. Yeah, they're not going to really do too much. Oh, and the Mahouts just absolutely obliterate them. Look at this. Oh, God. It's like Daddy's getting the belt out. Look at that. Oosh, God. I said, that's five units down. They're, they're not cheap, those guys. They're not cheap. Looks like he's cleaning up some Royal Huntsmen down here. That is unfortunate. The scores, he bounced back somewhat. He is starting to age up now. What's he aging up with? The Marksman! You've got a shipment. The Madman's not even aging up fast. The balls on this guy. The utter balls on this guy. Holy crap. How he walks around. With balls that big, I do not know. But we'll see if it pays off. We'll see if it pays off. Oh, another TC now for Frontline. I hear music. I hear music. It looks like it was the balance of powers. I have no idea what he just caught. Oh, no, it was the hot air balloon. <laughs> He's caused the hot air balloon. If we look at his line of sight right now, look at this. Why Why are hot air balloons not used enough? I love hot air balloons. They're not used enough. I do my bit, okay, by using hot air balloons in some of my build orders. But they're not used enough, which is such a shame. And they're, they're actually so good. This big... This is a... Think about it. What that hot air balloon can produce, the amount of information that that can produce, can single-handedly win games. And you can get it for free at a, at a nature TP. Uh, sorry, a native TP. Hey-ho, that's just me. That's just me. 4k score difference now. But it's about to go up and he went up the marksman. And that's going to be the skirmishers. Mr. Blackburn coming in. Perfect timing. We're having a nice juicy cast. A kind of a 2k high elo cast here. So you guys are... You've missed a good one, I have to say. It's been an interesting one. These poor elephants. The, the, the headache... That they must get from just headbutting brick walls. Call the RSPCA. Some nice Rajputs defending a raid here. 
So the French player trying to get some nice raids in. Going for like a Sepoy Gurkha build, mixing in with a couple of Mahouts as well. A few Rajputs there as well. Rajputs have been a very, very good unit at the moment. Okay, the French player now kind of got a nice mix now of his own version of Skirmgoon. Lots of expos though. I wonder if he's gonna if he's actually gonna upgrade those expos. It would definitely with with 38 expos, that's actually a lot of expos. It would definitely be worth getting the veterancy tech with them. It's probably even worth, especially with the build order that he's got, just actually going for expos anyway. Yes, they don't have as much range as conventional skirmishers, but they're kind of a soft counter versus skirmishers. They tend to have uh, if we look at the base attack, I mean that this is not veteran, but that's 16. Whilst these Gurkhas have 20. So yeah, they're, 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 they're a soft counter in the sense that they're, they're a much cheaper unit. So. Oh, oh, nice. Frontline wanting to get his own Jigelian. French player says, uh-uh-uh. There's the Tower of Victory. The Carni Marta. Hmm. Yeah, definitely got, definitely got an Expo build here, potentially. Wow, okay, going for Wilderness Warfare. That's going to up the CBDs and the... Oh, Veteran Skirmishers as well, yes. Oh, no. I was going to say, and and his natives, but decided not to go for that. Going for two Falconets, which... Yeah, I think that's the safer bet, Sunshine. Okay, going for Kurz, actually. Wow, he, he really can't make up his mind. Interesting. Also getting this tech, the Range Cavalry Caracol, which is going to uh, impact right. his Lip Cars. Lip Cars. Shotwide is now at 300 HP. Interesting. Look at that lance charge attack. S such an insane charge. But they're, like I said, they're a very glass cannon-esque unit. So low HP, but high damage output. There we go. There's the veteran C for the crossbows. He's looking pretty healthy right now. Although the score says otherwise. Frontline just pulling further and further away. 35 vils for the French player. 54 for the India player. Oh, did I? Do my eyes deceive me? Or did he just get some petards? He did just get some petards. Frontline going for the naughty. He's going to be uh, running around the back of the base. All three Mahouts now coming out as well. This is going to look rough for the French player, I have to say. That's not a lot of goons. That's not a lot. Shot is going down. Just delving right deep in there. They're, they're finding their opportunity. They're getting in there. The, the sepoys aren't interested. They're just going to fire them down. They don't need to melee. Yeah, like, could have waited for the Kurs. It was kind of unfortunate timing. With those Kurs in there, it could have been a very different story. But there's just such a big mass that they're going to kind of be able to one-hit these uh, Shock Riders. Okay, a couple of villagers going down. We do see some surging down there. Frontline just absolutely having some fun here. Five Mahus coming up the rear side of the Expos. Look at that quadruple kill. Oh, it's magnificent. And anyone that says Mahouts is a bad unit, that's how you micro, Don. That's how you micro. These are just going to absolutely wail on everything here. And the French player, I, I, I don't think, is going to have inspirations out as well. Just perfect timing by front line. Two go down, three go down. There's one Mahout left. Oh, look at that. But at what cost? At what cost of the French and pretty much his entire army? And there's the GG. Perfect timing. Well played to both players. This bullet chain is a, is a 2k elo player. However, frontline, man is a confident 2k player. And he's also playing India. I don't want to moan too much, but, you know, the French player got out civ micro somewhat. India, just extremely good civilization. You know, practically the second best civ in the game, uh, arguably, after Italy at the moment. But don't take anything away from Frontline. He, he punished the TP line perfectly. The French player went extremely greedy. Uh, too greedy by the looks of it. And unfortunately, it didn't quite pay off. So well played to Frontline. That 10k score at the end. We'll just take a quick look at the village account. Ooh. Yeah, didn't build any villages for a while there. And he just kind of fell behind. India. Free villager of each shipment. Two TCs. Bish bash bosh. They're having a good time. Resources gathered. A little bit surprised by that. It was. I thought it would have been uh, more favoured for frontline most of the game, but uh, changing over at about the 15 minute, 15 and a half minute mark. Pretty good.